Hey everybody, welcome to Money's No Object. I'm your host, Dylan Howell. This is episode number 266 of our YouTube channel and podcast, and I cannot be more excited to continue sharing with you guys personal finance topics that I think could be useful for you in your long-term financial journey. Today, we are going to be talking about the amount of money that it takes for you to feel financially secure. Uh, because I know that this is a really, really big deal. It's a really, really big deal in personal finance to feel secure, to feel that sense of security and safety. Uh, and money gives us those emotional responses. It gives us a feeling of security if we have enough. It gives us a feeling of insecurity if we don't have enough. So I want to talk about how much is enough uh, when it comes to your savings uh, and your planning for the future and retirement. So stick around for all that and more in today's episode. Before we get started, though, if you could go down below, hit the big red subscribe button, like this video, leave any feedback in the comments down below, and I'll be sure to respond to anything you leave down there. If you're listening on Apple or Spotify podcast, be sure to subscribe and leave me a review on either one of those platforms. Follow me on social media at MNO with Dylan, and that's really good supplemental materials to all the things I'm putting out in these long-form episodes on YouTube and the podcast every single day. And if you need somebody to help you to build a financial plan and keep you accountable to that plan over the long term, then I can do that. Just DM me on any of the major social media sites and tell me that you are interested in financial coaching sessions, and you and I can begin working together, pushing towards some long-term financial goals that we create for you, and then ultimately pushing you towards long-term financial freedom, which is what I hope for every single individual individual who watches or listens to this show on a day-to-day -day basis. Now, we've gone through quite the year and a half, right? We've gone through quite a lot since COVID began to ravage the country and the world, okay? And one of the things that we can take away from uh, this tragedy and take away from this pandemic is that we need to learn to do better things with our money, right? And we need to figure out what security means when it comes to our money because a lot of people who may have thought they were financially secure may have lost a job and been uh, on unemployment and realized that the amount of money that they had was not financial security or uh, you know somebody got sick and they had hospital bills and whatever and they realized that uh, this idea of financial security was not something that they had a grasp on yet and so uh, I don't think that we should ultimately look towards our money for our security. I want to begin there. Okay. I don't think our security should be found in our money. I think your security, ultimately being a Bible believing Christian, I believe that your security should be found uh, in God, in Jesus Christ, in uh, that redeeming salvation that we have. Right. I think that's where your ultimate security lies. Okay. But we all know that you have to have money to operate. Okay. And you have to have money to do the things that you want. To do Now, that doesn't mean they are have-tos, and that doesn't mean that they are needs, and that doesn't mean uh, that we have to spend frivolously, and that doesn't mean that if we don't get to the level that we want to get to, that we are failures, right? We don't need to find our identity in our money, and we don't need to find our ultimate security in our money. But having a certain amount of money in the bank feels pretty good, okay? Having a certain amount of money in the bank where you know that if you were to lose a job, then things would be okay. Or if your uh, spouse were to lose a job, things would be okay at least for you know four to six months or whatever until they can get back onto their feet when it comes to uh, the job market, right? Uh, so that feels good. And it feels good to know that at some point you don't have to work all the way until your death, right? You can retire and retire in a way uh, where you can still make some type of impact in whatever field that you want to make an impact in, but ultimately uh, you're able to step away from the work that you were doing uh, that was making a living and providing for you and your family, okay? So uh, even though it doesn't provide us our ultimate security, financial security is a thing, Okay, and it is a thing that uh, will either make people do really irrational things, uh, and it could be a thing uh, that can make you really feel good about where you are financially. So, uh, I want to talk about uh, the amount that you may need in order to feel financially secure. All right, and Americans say in a, in a recent survey, right, when asked how much needs to be saved in order to consider themselves financially healthy and financially secure. The average number was $516,433, according to a new report by a financial services company, Personal Capital. About 20% said that they would need more than a million, which is of no surprise, right? Uh, having a million dollars, especially a million dollars in retirement savings, is not near what it used to be. It's not near as, um, you know, 
fancy as it used to be. It's not near as uh, glamorous as it used to be because a million dollars can go quick, especially as the value of the dollar continues to decrease and decrease. And though responses to this survey varied widely, most said that having $500,000 in the bank would be enough to cover bills and expenses as well as future needs, including retirement savings, without worry. Okay, So people believe that $500,000, that half a million, would get them home. For the average working American, $500,000 would be plenty of money, said CFP Dave Tota, a senior wealth advisor in Frisco, Texas. Generally, personal finance experts recommend having three to six months or even longer of living expenses on hand uh, at any given time in case of an emergency. And You know, I tell you guys uh, that four to six months should be about right. And the reason that that's about right is that's about how long uh, it's going to take any individual who may lose a job uh, to get back on their feet and get a new job. Okay, Whether the job is as big as the previous one as far as income goes, uh, that is left up to interpretation. But uh, to get a new job and to get one that can sustain for some period of time, uh, it may take up to four to six months and uh, even less right now when so many different places are looking for workers. Okay, But that's neither here nor there. My idea is four to six months. My thought process is four to six months. You can have three to six months, whatever, uh, but they kind of all fall into that same uh, level of how much you need in an emergency fund. Now, for retirement, there are simple rules of thumb. We've talked about some of these simple rules of thumb before. Uh, one of the most common is saving 10 times your income uh, by retirement age. Uh, and the whole idea of this is if you are going to uh, replace your income in retirement, then if you made 10% on your money annually, then you would be able to replace 100% of your pre-retirement income. Okay, so this is uh, something that can be done, but 10% is kind of lofty for a retirement withdrawal rate. Again, we've talked about withdrawal rates before, uh, and the, that being the amount of money that we would take off of our retirement accounts every single uh, year uh, on average uh, in order to live when we are retired retired. Okay. Uh, and 10% is very high. 4% is generally the rule of thumb. Uh, but I've also kind of poked holes in the idea that you can only make 4% in retirement because I don't think that's the case either. But nonetheless, for many, the pandemic has been a financial wake up call that's prompted them to rethink the way they plan for their futures. Most people still struggle to save enough for comfortable cash cushions, right? Uh, I've told you many times, it's still true that most people can't cover a $400 expense, much less a $1,000 expense. Okay, that's why I put such a premium on the need for an emergency fund, on the need to have some emergency savings set aside, uh, even before you get that four to six months that you have one month of expenses uh, in case something goes awry that you can deal with it uh, in cash on purpose uh, up front, okay? Now, before the pandemic, the Federal Reserve found uh, that 40% of Americans would have difficult paying an unexpected $400 expense. Like I said, this is uh, a very real thing. And a survey released by Bankrate.com in January indicates that those cash reserves still fall short for many people. Only 39% of people able to pay for a $1,000 emergency expense out of savings. Okay, So again, this is a big problem. And saying that you need half a million in order to feel financially secure and yet not being able to cover 400 or a thousand dollars is a huge problem just 19 percent of americans have enough to cover three to five months okay so that's you know within the range that i talk about and 25 percent have enough to cover six months or more bank rate also found only 17 percent of adults said they have more emergency savings now than they did pre-pandemic and that's not surprising uh, that fewer people are going to have more emergency savings now uh, but only 17% saying that they have more is kind of strange because 83% uh, of Americans didn't lose their jobs and 83% of Americans didn't have to use their emergency funds. So it sounds like there's some uh, draining of savings for something, maybe buying houses, maybe something else. That's just uh, my conjecture. And still, more than half of Americans, or 51%, have less than three months stashed in an emergency fund, which again is extremely problematic over the long term because it rains, things happen, right? There are expensive things that come along unforeseen and if you can't cover them, then you're gonna have to go into debt and what I always say, debt is a strain on your cash flow and it may uh, you know, accrue interest and different things that won't allow you to move forward financially, which is not what we want.
To bolster your savings, the wealth advisor I talked about earlier recommends scaling back your spending for starters, right? Have a hard look at your budget and you can cut out the nice to have things and carve out a little bit of additional savings. And I agree with this, right? I tell you in the financial action plan that the first thing that you need to do is create a unique monthly budget. OK, and you need to trim that budget down, especially if you are still in debt or you don't have an emergency fund. You need to trim down that budget to a place where uh, you can create some margin. All right. And some people truly can't trim down their budgets because they're living on bare bones income. But most people can trim down their budgets given their income uh, and then others may not have enough income, so they need to go create some more income, right? There's two sides of the ledger. There is the income and the outgo, and you need to take care of both. Then you can also bump up your 401k contributions, or at the very least, contribute enough money to get the company's full match, which is the third part of the financial action plan, right? This is what I tell you to do. I tell you in the third part of the financial action plan to get the company match, right? And then obviously, uh, by the sixth part of the financial action plan, what you're doing is investing at least 15% into your future, right? And your children's future, uh, which includes your 401ks, IRAs, and your brokerage accounts, 529s, different things like that. You can pick up some more free money by that uh, matching contribution from your employer, right? So if you want to save more, uh, that's a way that you can save more. But we need to make sure that we build the financial foundation that we need to have before we get into that place, right? That's why I tell you, you need to have a month's worth of expenses in an emergency fund before you take the company match. And then you only need to take the company match until you get completely out of debt, uh, consumer-wise, other than your mortgage, and then have four to six months in an emergency savings account. And then, you can begin investing more and then you can begin paying off your house and all the things that are just wealth maximizing parts of the financial action plan. And ultimately what we need to keep our eyes on here is that four to six months of household expenses uh, is not going to make up that $500,000 that you need. Okay. So when uh, Americans are saying they need 500,000 in savings, right? That does include retirement savings and retirement savings are investments or generally investments, right? This should be uh, invested money. Okay, it shouldn't be money that's just put into a cash account within your 401k or your IRA or whatever. You should be actively investing that money. Okay, now, then the question really becomes, is that 500,000 enough? Okay, and then how much do you need above and beyond your emergency savings in order to be where you need to be in retirement? Now, I think of the emergency savings and your retirement savings as two separate things. Okay, you should have your emergency savings and that should be sitting there and you shouldn't be doing anything with it. It shouldn't be uh, intermingled with your retirement savings and your other investments that you have. Okay, it should not be intermingled in that way. But your retirement savings should be money that's invested growing over the long term that you're actively contributing to. Now, I've told you before that you can actively put money into your emergency fund to keep bumping it up uh, to keep up with inflation. But otherwise, you shouldn't have to put a bunch of money into your emergency fund time after time after time unless your expenses are actively increasing in your household, uh, which if they are, that means either you must be making more money or you're getting a little out of control with your budget. Now, Let's just talk about a few things about how you can get to where you need to go with your money and how much money you ultimately need. First of all, when you are saving for retirement, obviously you are going to have to put money away and you're going to have to put money away in droves to get to even half a million dollars. You're going to have to put money away in droves because what ends up happening, right? is that the less time that you have to invest and the lower rates of return you make on your investments, the less money you end up having. And the more money you end up having to invest in order to get to where you want to go. Okay, so you have to be actively investing. Uh, you have to be very intentional about the money that you're putting away. Because if you are not, if you are not intentional about the money that you're putting away and you're not putting away enough, then you're not gonna get to where you need to go. Your income is your number one wealth building tool. What does that mean? That means that your income is the money that you end up investing, the money you end up putting away for your future. And if you aren't using your income in order to do that, right, then you are squandering the ability to build wealth. OK, so we need to make sure that we're putting away enough. Then the question becomes, what's enough and how much can I expect to grow my money over a long period of time? 
I'm going to run a few scenarios for you guys and just talk you through it. Things that we've talked about before uh, that are no surprise, but uh, you need to be aware of these things. And I'm going to use just an 8% compounded rate of return uh, as the benchmark by which I make these assumptions. Now, uh, 8% over the long term has been done by the S&P 500. 10% uh, has been done by the S&P 500. But I want to go a little more conservative just so you can know that this is possible uh, in the long run, that you can make these types of rates of return and you can put away this amount of money. Okay, so let's just begin with that half a million dollar mark uh, that Americans think that they need in order to feel financially secure. Now, I, just spoiler alert, don't think that that's enough, but let's begin there. Okay, if you believe that you need $500,000 to retire on, to be financially secure, to take care of yourself over the long term, okay, how much money do you need to invest at 8%, like I just said, right, in order to live your long term retirement dreams and uh, to be financially secure? Well, if you have 20 years to invest, okay, so let's say you're 40 and you want to retire at 60, all right, you have 20 years to invest in order to get to uh, that $500,000 number, you need to be investing $848.87 per month in order to get there. That's a lot of money. Now, if you're getting an employer match and you're investing 15% of your income, you can definitely do that amount for most people. Okay, Most people can get there. All right, But that's still a lot of money to be put away each month. Now, let's say you have 30 years to invest. So maybe you're 30 and you want to invest all the way to 60. Okay, so you can put away $335.49 per month at 8%, right? And do that in order to get to the $500,000. Uh, and so this is far less, it is less than half, and you just invested for 10 more years uh, than the individual who invested uh, for 20 years. Now, what is very interesting about this is that you, even though you invest for longer, you invest less in overall amount uh, than the person who invested for only 20 years. They have to invest $203,728.08 overall over that 20 years, and you only have to invest $120,000 thousand seven hundred and seventy six dollars and twenty three cents over that uh, 30 year period then let's say you have 40 years to invest let's say you're 25 and want to retire at 65 or you're even 20 and you're trying to get a head start and you want to retire at 60 okay well you can put away hundred and forty three dollars and twenty three cents a month at eight percent over a 40 year period in order to get to the $500,000 that we were talking about previously. And this means you only invested $68,748.06 over a 40 year period in order to get to where you wanted to go. And so you invested far less than anybody else, but you got to the exact same place because the more time you have, the better. Okay, so you can see this is the compound interest idea. Now let's say, right, that 500,000 isn't enough because I don't think that 500,000 is enough, okay? What I would say is enough, all right? Let's use a 4% withdrawal rate. And let's say that you wanted $80,000 a year in retirement. Well, on a 4% withdrawal rate, to get $80,000 a year, you need $2 million, okay? So let's say that $2 million is where you're trying to get, and let's use the same set of assumptions that we just used. Now, uh, this is going to look way different. This is going to be uh, quite the different calculation and be even more magnified in the amount of money that you need to put away, okay? But if you're able to do this over a long period of time, then you can get to a place where you are extremely financially secure uh, by most American standards, uh, and hopefully you're very financially secure by your own standards. Now, to be clear, Investing for 20 or 30 years, it's going to be a lot harder here unless you make more than the 8% that we are uh, assuming that you would make here. But nonetheless, these are the amounts of money that you would have to put away in order to get to $2 million over certain amounts of time. Okay, Over 20 years, you would have to put away $3,395.47 per month. You would end up investing $814,912.33 over a 20-year period. That is a ton of money to invest. You almost invest half the money that you're going to end up having over the long term. Okay, so that is a lot. Uh, that's going to be a difficult number to get to unless you have a higher income. Okay, so you see the importance of starting earlier to invest longer uh, than you can invest less over a long period of time. Now, if you have 30 years to invest, still a lot of money here, but $1,341.96 per month. 
Now, if you have an employer match or uh, if you are investing at least 15% of your income, this may not be as much of a stretch, but you still end up investing over a long period of time $483,104.93 in order to get to a $2 million number. But then, if you want to invest for 40 years, 25 to 65, 20 to 60, whatever, right? At 8%, $572.90 is all you would need to put away per month, which if you're investing 15% of your income should be pretty easy. Uh, and if you are uh, able to get an employer match, again, should be pretty easy. Uh, and then you only have to invest total $274,992.22 and you get uh, almost 10x that uh, 40 years uh, into the future. Okay. So Obviously, you see that time makes a big difference. And if we're going to get to where we need to get to or where we even feel like is enough to be financially secure, we have to start early and we have to start using our income to invest and try to get the best rates of return that you can. 8% is a conservative rate of return over a long period of time for the stock market because over a long period of time, it has made 10. Okay, And those numbers change uh, in the amount that you have to put away if you put in a 10% rate of return, which I'm not going to do for you guys, but you can go uh, and use different time value of money calculators in order to uh, figure that out for yourself. Okay. But, uh, the amount that you would have to invest at a 10% rate of return is going to be less in order to get to the same number. So believe that you can still do this and you won't have to invest uh, quite as much. I think the easiest uh, number to quote, because I just know this off the, off the top of my head and I've run the numbers plenty of times is that uh, if you have 40 years to invest and you invest at 10%, uh, $158 a month, you will get to a million dollars in 40 years. So that's $1 million, not the 2 million that we were looking to accumulate here. Okay, so uh, even at $150 a month, you can still do some real damage, okay? Uh, and like I said earlier, at $143.23 a month at an 8% rate of return, you can get to half a million dollars. But that's how you can accumulate the money that you need to accumulate to feel financially secure. But again, I don't think $500,000 is enough. And here is why, uh, and then ultimately here is how you can feel the most financially secure going into retirement. First of all, we have to know where our money is, right? Because if you're putting money into a 401k, a traditional 401k or traditional IRAs or whatever, that is pre-tax money. So if you have $500,000 in your traditional 401k, that is not going to translate to $500,000 that you can put in your pocket. Okay, that's going to translate into far, far less because it is taxable when you take it out uh, in retirement. Okay, so if you don't know where your money is and it ends up all being taxable to you and you thought you had enough, then you're going to be very disappointed at the fact uh, that maybe you know one fifth of the money that you brought in or uh, a quarter of the money uh, that you had in that account is not not going to end up in your pocket. Uh, and so what you're going to have to do is you're going to have to uh, make higher rates of return or you're going to have to save up more money over time uh, in order to get to a place where you can still have the exact same lifestyle as somebody who may have uh, tax-free money in the way of Roth IRAs or Roth 401ks or things of the like. But ultimately what we have to know is we have to know ourselves. Right? If you don't know yourself, then you don't know the amount of money that you're going to need to feel financially secure and especially financially secure when it comes to retirement. Okay, You have to know what your expenses are. You have to know what your income is. You have to know how much of a spender or a saver you are. Right, And if you're a big spender, then it's going to be very, very difficult uh, to get to a place where you can save enough for retirement over a long period of time. Not to mention, uh, you have to know going into retirement, if you are a big spender and that's going to be part of your budget, then you have to have enough retirement savings in order to facilitate the lifestyle that you're creating for yourself. Okay, But ultimately, if you don't live below your means, you're just not going to be able to get to where you want to get to over the long term in retirement. But then when you are planning for retirement, you're planning for the amount of money that you need, right? What you're going to have to do, you're going to have to uh, conservatively estimate the amount of expenses you're going to have in retirement. And by conservative estimates, when it comes to expenses, what I mean is maybe bumping up the numbers a little bit more than you really think they'll be in order to make sure that you can uh, cover even if 
uh, the amount of money that you need is a little more. So conservatively estimate your expenses. Uh, understand that inflation is going to eat away at the value of your money. And I've talked about this several times, uh, but we, we're actually seeing some inflation now. Uh, it's you know come down just a little bit over the past month, but uh, we're still seeing inflation and we've always seen inflation. Inflation, uh, whether or not it's been high or relatively low, uh, we have seen inflation. We have seen uh, where the value of the dollar has declined and declined declined over time. And when the value of your dollar declines, that means the purchasing power of your money is less, meaning you can purchase less with the same amount of money. And that's what's going to happen when you are retired. If you're retired for 20, 30 years, right? Uh, think about the difference in prices over a 20 or 30 year period, right? Think about the prices of items in 2000 versus today or in 1990 versus today. Things are so much more expensive today because of inflation. And if you were retired over that whole amount of time, uh, then you you know that uh, your retirement money is not going as far today as it was 20 or 30 years ago. And that's going to be a reality. So we have to factor inflation in. And when we're investing in our retirement assets, we have to make sure we're at least keeping up with inflation or else the value of our money is not truly growing over time. Okay. Then you also have to take into account things like healthcare and long-term care, uh, things that you are going to have to cover if they come up, right? Uh, if you have some health problems, which unfortunately a lot of older individuals do, uh, then that is going to be a cost that maybe you don't have when you're working and when you're young and vibrant and up and moving, right? And then ultimately, if you have to go into a long-term care facility uh, that you know you have Alzheimer's or you have dementia or you have uh, these different issues where you can't take care of yourself and you need somebody to take care of you, that's going to come out of your pocket too. Okay, So we can't just plan for this situation where we're going to spend down all of our retirement savings in a way like, okay, uh, $500,000. Well, if I've got $500,000, uh, I can take $50,000 a year for 10 years. Or if I have a million, I can take uh, $50,000 a year for 20 years. That calculation does not work. And that calculation ends up getting scrapped when any of these things happen, like your expenses rising uh, or inflation devaluing your money uh, in that way, healthcare costs coming along that you didn't foresee, long-term care costs coming along that you didn't foresee. And then you end up in a place where retirement is not comfortable and you don't have enough financial security there. Uh, and once you find that out, it's too late, right? It is a measure twice or measure 10 times cut once type thing when it comes to determining if you're ready to retire or not, or if you have enough money to retire or not. Because ultimately, uh, once you've been out of the workforce for so long, not that you can't go back, but going back in the same capacity is going to be extremely, extremely, extremely difficult. So how much do I believe you need uh, in your retirement account in order to uh, get to where you need to be over the long term? I think that if you take all of your expenses that you believe that you'll have uh, on a conservative basis, right, you adjust them for inflation, let's say over a 20 year period, right, and you can determine that given the maximum amount of expenses that you would have, that you can cover those expenses 15 to 20 times with the amount of money that you take out each year from your retirement accounts, then I think that is going to be enough for you in retirement. So I believe that your nest egg should be 15 to 20 times uh, the conservative estimates of the annual expenses that you are going to have uh, over a long period of time and that you should be able to cover those conservative estimates 15 to 20 times uh, with your nest egg uh, with the amount of money that you take off every single year. So th this would assume uh, that the uh, withdrawal rate that you're looking for is somewhere between 5 and 7%. So you're going to have to be making 5 to 7% on your money uh, and you want to be keeping up with inflation over time, right? But again, this is just kind of a rule and a thought process that I've you know, come up with that I think uh, can be necessary for you guys. You can, you know, follow the 4% rule or whatever you want to follow. Uh, but ultimately, you have to take these things into account over time. Uh, and you have to take into account any other type of income that you're going to bring in in retirement or whatever. But ultimately, right, if you think about uh, that rule of thumb that I gave, is $500,000 really going to be enough? Right. And if you look around and you see that pensions are dying and Social Security is not that much relative to the amount of money that uh, you're going to need. Is $500,000 really going to be enough? It, it may definitely be for some people. I'm not saying it's not because things differ on uh, a case by case basis. I'm not going to just you know paint everything with broad strokes, but for most people, $500,000 isn't enough. And for most people, a million dollars is still going to be tough uh, to maintain, 
the principal value and live on in retirement over time. Because ultimately, you want to maintain your principal so that golden goose keeps laying those golden eggs and you can keep living off of that nest egg that you have. So uh, hopefully this helps you uh, to better conceptualize the amount of money that you're going to need in retirement, the amount of money that you're going to need to save up over time. Uh, The fact that it is actually doable uh, given real numbers and real income. uh, And hopefully I can encourage you and I I will continue to encourage you here that you can get to where you want to get to over the long period of time. You just have to learn about how to invest your money. You have to use your income to invest and to invest aggressively over time. You have to live on less than you make. And then you ultimately have to get to a point uh, where you can feel financially secure and you know uh, that if you are to quit work and and retire and not have any other income sources uh, that you would end up being okay. So uh, hopefully this helps you guys out. Hopefully uh, you can feel financially secure one day. Uh, And for those of us who are all working towards the ultimate feeling of financial freedom, financial security, financial independence, whatever you want to say, whatever you want to call it, whatever jargon you want to use, right? Uh, I can continue to help you to do that, hopefully on the show every single day. Uh, And hopefully, uh, if you need anything that you'll just reach out and ask me any specific questions that you have. So thanks for watching this video. If you could go down below, hit the big red subscribe button, like this video, leave me any feedback in the comments down below, and I'll be sure to respond to anything you leave down there. If you're listening on Apple or Spotify podcast, be sure to subscribe and leave me a review on either one of those platforms. Follow me on social media at MNO with Dylan, and that's really good supplemental materials to all the things I'm putting out in these long form episodes on YouTube and the podcast every single day. And then if you need somebody to help you to build a financial plan and keep you accountable to that plan over the long term, then I can do that. Just DM me on any of the major social media sites. Tell me that you are interested in financial coaching sessions, and you and I can begin working together, pushing towards your long-term financial goals, and then ultimately pushing you towards financial freedom and financial security over the long term. So tune in tomorrow as I continue talking about personal finance topics that I think can be useful for you in your long-term financial journey. So thanks for tuning in to this episode of Money's No Object. I'm your host, Dylan Howell. God bless.